what's going on folks happy easter to everybody out there in uh, youtube land and we're here on easter celebrating uh, the world's most famous zombie jesus christ himself and i figure what better way to celebrate the world's most famous uh, member of the living dead than to do a top 10 countdown of George A. Romero's zombies. Now, these are zombies ranging from Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, Land of the Dead, um, and even including Diary of the Dead and Survival of the Dead. So, um, so I'm going to do my personal countdown of the top 10 zombies um, in uh, the George A. Romero uh, zombie universe. Um, now, strict criteria on this one, um, very technical system. This is my opinion. Uh, if you disagree with uh, the selections or the order, let me know in the comments. Let me know uh, what your top 10 uh, would be in this area. Um, but like I said, I use a very strict criteria and um, a very technical system, a point system. Um, for these zombies. Um, I judge them through four different categories here. Performance, legacy, makeup, and importance. Now, performance-wise, it's the performance of the actor. How is the zombie? Their zombie walk. Um, you know, their, uh, their facial features. There's just their overall performance of the actor playing, um, playing the zombie. Uh, legacy. Uh, what is their legacy? Um, in terms of the uh, uh, Romero universe. Um, and that includes outside of the films and, you know, convention scenes. Um, you know, how is their legacy looked at? Um, if, if, if you're a zombie who had who, um, played a role in Dawn of the Dead for, you know, 30 seconds a minute, but uh, you're still doing conventions today and um, making a pretty good living at it, I'd say you have a, a, a pretty high number in the legacy category. Um, uh, the makeup, um, of course, this includes the makeup of the zombie itself. But if the zombie dies in the movie, the uh, makeup effect, um, the effect used in, in that kill um, also counts towards um, the makeup um, portion of this. And then, of course, importance. What is their importance? To the film itself, the story being told, and even on a bigger scale, uh, what is their importance to the Romero um, zombie universe in general? Um, so yeah, four categories. I rated them all out of a one to ten on each category, and uh, I've come up with my definitive top ten list of the George A. Romero universe zombies. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to be doing tonight. I got my list pulled up and ready to go. And we're going to be counting down the top 10 zombies in the Georgia Mary universe. So let's go ahead and get into this. At number 10, first of all, let me let me uh, sidetrack here before I forget. A couple of honor, uh, honorable mentions here. Um, number one, I want to give an honorable mention to Helicopter Zombie, Jim Crutt. Didn't make my top 10, but without a doubt, an iconic zombie um, in the Romero universe. Jim Crud is still doing conventions today. I mean, he's got all oh, he's got his own action figure now. I have one over there signed by him. He's got his own action figure. Um, he's got rags, pins, paper, you know, all kinds of stuff. He actually gave me um, last time I saw him at Living Dead Weekend last year. Um, he actually gave me it's a, a, a paper a sheet uh, from a coloring book of the. Uh, I should have I should have grabbed it. Uh, before I got on here, but gave it to me to give to uh, my daughter to color, and she did, and it's hanging on our uh, fridge downstairs as we speak. So uh, definitely big in the legacy category. Um, of course, big points in the makeup. Uh, Performance-wise, you know, it is what it is. Um, fairly simple performance by Jim Crutt, and then his importance to the film, you know, very low number. I mean, it, it, it his importance was so. I mean, I think yeah. Even in the uh, the Italian version, the Argento cut, they cut him. Com they cut him out of the out of the movie in general. So I guess you know, 
um, and say what you want, you know, whether you like that cut of the film or not, you know, if, if you can, I, and I don't even understand why they cut him out of there, um, out of that, out of that cut. That would be a question for Argento, I guess. But, uh, so yeah, didn't quite crack the top 10. And then the other one that I got on here that, uh, may not score high in a lot of those categories, but is a zombie that I think is still popular today. And I, and I realized this when we went to the, um, uh, the 3D showings of Dawn of the Dead, I went twice, and both times, um, you know, there were there were a number of people in the theaters, and the the one of the zombies that always got a big reaction was the gun zombie, um, Jay Stover, who plays the zombie that has the gun pointed to his head, and that always seemed to get a um, a reaction from the crowd. Anytime he was even on screen, he'd be in the background and, and there was a guy sitting next to me and just like, Oh, there he is. There he is. He still got that gun, you know? So still an effective thing, but, um, but yeah, then I was just thinking about it and, and, and you wonder, and of course this is just nerd fan think, but you wonder uh, at that point in the movie, um, and in that, in the universe in general, they point out that the zombies, they're still a part of there's, the human that's inside of them, which they expand on more as the films go on, that part of them inside of them that was once alive and human and what they did, um, it's still there inside of them. Um, it's always wondering, you know, it's always funny that he he holds the rifle um, to, straight to his head the entire time. And it just kind of dawned on me, like, was that um, a suicidal thing? Where the 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 guy trapped inside of the zombie now, um, the guy that was once alive understands, and he wants he just wants to die. He he wants somebody to pull the trigger. He can't figure out how. He knows that if I put this to my head, you know they can that the he he that he can't actually pull the trigger himself. So he's just kind of always got it there. And 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 it's one of the weirdest things in the movie is it's it's kind of tragic and in a weird way you know roger he's trying to he's got the gun pointed which how he you know it's how he gets the uh the rifle from roger to begin with he's got the gun pointed at him and, and roger's about to pull the trigger but peter deters him from it and then he moves on lets the rifle go and he's just kind of sitting there stuck with it holding it um and it's like through the whole movie you just see him wandering around the background he you know he's always there and then by the end he's you know he switches guns with peter you know um but there's uh, just something kind of sad about that, that he just, he wants, he doesn't want to be a zombie. He wants it to end. That's the way I interpret it, at least. I don't know. Just me overthinking this shit, um, <laughs> which I have a tendency to do. Um, but yeah, yeah. So just an honorable mention to him. I think that's an interesting, an interesting uh, zombie just from a character standpoint and just kind of, you know, what you interpret it as. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was just like, oh, this would be funny. Let's just have him hold the the, you know, the rifle to his head the entire time, or uh, maybe it was something a little deeper there that George was trying to convey um, about the, this character. And that's the beautiful thing about these, about George's zombies is they are characters. They're memorable. Um, and I've spoken about this before, but I think that's the thing that separates Romero zombies from other zombies. Um, they're memorable. They're still human on some level. Um, and there's a certain compassion that you have for them. Because really, they're just lost souls. Really, they they they're just they're just kind of wandering around. They don't understand why they're there, what they're what they're doing. They're you know they should be dead, but they're not. Um, and their only instinct that they have is just to you know to kill and eat, um, which is you know just a, eating is a very basic instinct for any species. Period. Uh, every species has to eat. Um, so yeah, just want to throw those out there, two honorable mentions. But let's go ahead and get into the top 10 zombies um, in the George A. Romero universe. And at number 10, um, got to throw him in here. He just beats out the helicopter zombie, um, and that is the machete zombie, played by uh, Lenny Lees. Um, and, <clears throat> of course, uh, in terms of performance, you know, not, not a, you know, nothing special, nothing in particular there. He was really just kind of a, a body for an effect, which I think is kind of the same thing. Same story with Jim Crud and the uh, the helicopter zombie. Um, so really a body just for an effect. 
not high on the on the performance level um and not uh not quite as high on the uh, importance level of the movie and as a matter of fact i think just in general um it's just probably pretty low on the importance uh, number but in terms of makeup um and uh and legacy um those are those are both uh probably maxed out those are probably tens um in, in my opinion legacy just for the fact that he's uh an icon overseas um he was he was the face on a lot of the posters overseas i think the french poster um is in the front of it's just the machete zombie lenny lee's um i think there's a cut there's a couple others there's a you know a ton of posters out there of him um, and of course he's still doing conventions to this day. He's one of the most popular, um, always one of the most popular, um, uh, guests at these conventions, uh, living dead weekend. He actually did, um, super, super nice guy. If you ever get a chance to, um, go talk to him. He's, he's, you know, he, he, he's really into, uh, really into what he does. And, um, actually when we met him a couple of years ago at living dead weekend, I had my, uh, my daughter who was less than a year old at the time. And um, we took a picture of her holding the machete, you know, in his head. And he was, you know, just just tickled to death to do it. So, I mean, just just a super guy, um, super cool guy. So legacy high. And then, of course, the makeup effect itself. Um, Tom, you know, hollows out, the, you know, cuts out a piece of the machete and puts it in his head. They film it in reverse. So it looks like it's going in. Um, not a lot of people had seen anything like that. Um, in, in, in any horror film before that, I mean, a, a lot of Dawn of the Dead, nobody had really ever seen before, but, uh, that effect in, in, in general was so well done. It's such an iconic effect. Um, and so simple. And that was the beauty of Tom and, and what he was able to accomplish, um, on Dawn of the Dead and, and even, you know, all of Romero's films going forward that he worked with, uh, worked on them with. So just a you know an iconic iconic zombie, not only here in the states but overseas as well. And like I said, if you ever get a chance to meet him at any of these conventions, do it. Um, you won't be disappointed. Um, super super good guy. So yeah, number ten, the machete zombie. And coming up right behind him at number nine, we've got the Harry Krishna zombie. Um. I put him, uh, he's a little down on the list, he's number nine, but I put him ahead of the Machete Zombie just for the simple fact that he has um, an officially licensed action figure, uh, which is actually maybe the first Dawn of the Dead action figure I ever bought, um, was the Harry Krishna Zombie. Performance, like I said, it is what it is. Um, it it kind of works in just the fact that it, there's something... Something memorable about it. Just his, he's completely blank. Like there's, there's, you know, there's not much, uh, not much going on there. <laughs> he's kind of just doing what he always did, which is kind of wandering around and, you know, uh, I don't know. He's not really you know, asking for money or anything, I guess. But, um, so yeah, performance not too high. Um, which is no knock against uh, uh, Mike Christopher, the guy who plays the Harry Krishna zombie. He wasn't an actor. I don't think he did anything ever after this. He was actually in a band at the time um, with the airport zombie, who we'll get to later, um, called Fluid. And there's, I, actually, I actually have, I think it's probably the first thing I ever posted on here. Um, first video is the uh, is a song from the band uh, that he was in at the time. So he was just kind of there. I don't, I don't, I really don't know the specifics of the costume. Um, if that was something that was. I'd have to go back and read maybe the screenplay, but to see if that was an actual thing that was written into the movie that they actually had a costume for, if it was just something he showed up with, I really don't know. Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, high grades on that. Effects, not you know, low, um, low number on that one. Nothing really in particular. Um, even his death is off screen. You don't see it, uh, which is interesting. Um, for a movie like that, for a movie like this. Um, so yeah, not high on that, but in terms of legacy and importance to the film, most of the film, uh, maybe not so, not so high either, but in terms of legacy, I mean, like I said, he has his own action figure. Um, he's one of the most, um, recognizable zombies in, in all of film ever. Um, so he, he really maxes out on that. And I, to me, it just puts him, uh, 
just ahead of the machetes. I mean, just because he basically has his own scene as well. Um, he wasn't just a, a setup like machetes. I on screen for what, maybe 30 seconds in total. Um, he actually has an entire scene where he's, you know, chasing Fran up the ladder and yada, yada, yada. And he's just such a memorable zombie. Um, so yeah, yeah, I definitely has put him on this list at number nine. Um, <clears throat> And if you don't have the action figure, it's actually a pretty, pretty damn cool action figure. Really well done. He even has his own mask. I think Trick or Treat uh, was the studio that did it. Um, so there's, uh, so he's, he's, you know, I'm sure he's still getting paid for something that he probably was just like, yeah, I'll do it. You know, I got nothing else better to do on, you know, Friday night or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's Got to put him on there. So, yeah, number 10, Machete Zombie. Number 9, the Harry Krishna Zombie. And at number 8, here's a big one. Big Daddy. Yes, Big Daddy from Land of the Dead. Now, a lot of people think uh, he may be, should be higher on this list, perhaps. Um, but I think uh, just in terms of the way I look at it, like, performance-wise, he had a pretty big run. And I'm going to judge, I'm going to judge um, his performance based on... <laughs> his role in the film, because he's basically one of the main characters in the land of the dead. Um, but I think, it, I don't want to, you know, put his performance down at all, but I, for me, there's just something about it that just never, just doesn't work. Um, parts of it does. Um, but to be honest, the, the yelling, I don't, I don't know. That always threw me off. Even the first time I saw it, I was just like, because eh. I mean, you know, we're used to, you know, Bub and, you know, the more intelligence. I mean, he's not, not howling. Like, uh, and there's, even at one point, he's just straight up yelling. So I, I don't know. Certain decisions, but I don't know if those were decisions that he made or if it was just direction from George. Um, but, you know, either way, there's something about that performance that just had never worked for me. Um, makeup wise, um, he doesn't die in the movie, but I mean, his makeup's fairly, fairly okay. Um, not, not, you know, nothing too, um, elaborate, but you know, good enough. So maybe a four, maybe a five on that one. Um, legacy, um, definitely has legacy still doing conventions to this day. Um, so, I mean, I'd, I'd say a little, a little above average in terms of legacy. And I mean, you know, his, his image is all over every poster, that they made of land of the dead. Um, so, I mean, you know, he, he's a fairly well-known zombie in this world. Um, and then importance to the film. I think that's where he scores his highest um, in terms of the story that George was telling through these films. And his importance to land of the dead is huge. I mean, like I said, he's one of the main characters um, in, in, in the film. Um, but, and his importance to the, to the overall thing, he's kind of, he's, he's the next step from Bub. Um, and so, like, in that world, that, that's a big deal. So I think he scores the highest on that one for me. But, yeah, like I said, something about the performance itself I wasn't a big fan of. Uh, Eugene Clark, I have met him once before. Um, and he's he's a really good, really good guy to meet as well. Because um, he, he gets into the character. He Like, he'll still get into the makeup sometimes. Um, or the outfit. Or... Um, yeah, he, he still, he has, he has a lot of fun with it. And I actually found a, um, just doing research to do this video, I actually found a CD, I guess, that he was re recorded a while back, um, of love songs or something. Um, never heard of it, never knew he did any such thing. Um, I posted a picture of it uh, on the channel if you want to check it out. But uh, needless to say, uh, there will be a review video coming soon. So get ready for that. Um, so yeah, Big Daddy number eight. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think of this uh, list down in the comments. If you have any objections, uh, if you're just downright pissed off that uh, maybe you're uh, the biggest Big Daddy fan um, in the world and you think you should be higher, let me know. Let me know that I'm I'm a complete idiot and my my system's broke. So um, I need to know these things. So let me know. Um, where are we at? Number seven. Number seven on the list. Dr. Tongue. 
Now, this one's interesting because performance-wise, you can't really grade them on a performance because it's not a real person. It's a, uh, a puppet. Um, opera, I guess you could give Tom Savini a performance grade because he's the one he was the one operating it. Um, so yeah, can't didn't score any points on performance, but in terms of makeup, it's a 10 out of 10. Um, it's one of the most iconic zombie makeups ever. Um, it's the first zombie you see in Day of the Dead. Um, and I mean, it, it's in full lighting and everything, I mean, it still looks amazing. So, so yeah, on the makeup department, big numbers. Um, big numbers. Um, fuck, what are my other categories? <laughs> Forget it. Legacy. Legacy. Big, big time legacy. He's got his own action figure that, that gets you big points on the legacy scale. But he's also just a zombie that you is instantly recognizable. You see that zombie, you're like, that's Dr. Time. I mean, he's got his own name, for God's sake. And if you have your own name... Um, in the uh, Romero zombie universe, uh, I'd say you're doing something right. Um, so yeah, big time legacy importance to the film, probably his lowest score, probably no importance whatsoever, other than the fact that it's the first zombie you see in Day of the Dead. So I'd give it maybe two, um, just because it's the first one. It's it's the first when you're watching Day of the Dead, the first zombie you see is is this fucked up face with a tongue sticking out, and it, it's it's amazing. It's it's truly amazing. Um, but yeah, I, I can't say enough about uh, just Tom Savini's work in general on Day of the Dead. It's his best by far. I don't know. He 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 likes to say creep show because I think he's really proud of Fluffy, which you know is it was something that was really outside of Tom's wheelhouse. He's not a, he's you don't think of Tom Savini as as a guy like uh, like a Stan Winston or um, or even Rob Bottin really. Do, you know, you don't really think of him in terms of like his big creature, you know, effects or, or puppet, but he did fluffy and, um, and he did a wonderful job. And, you know, you kind of wish that he would, uh, you know, maybe, maybe try it a little bit more of that in the future. But, um, but yeah, just in my opinion, in terms of just makeup effects, Day of the Dead is his best work by far. Um, and still every, almost every bit of that movie in terms of effects holds up to this day everybody talks about the effects in the thing and i love john carpenter's the thing um but in terms of effects that still hold up like today a lot of the effects in the thing people if you if you show a young person who's never seen the movie before for the first time some of them you can kind of see through and it's just kind of it's a kind of, you know um in my opinion um but in but Day of the Dead, oh, yeah, you know, there's not there's not much to see through, and and even something as just a puppet controlled, you know. However, Tom, I guess he had like one arm in each hand and was just kind of walking him like this, you know, um, <laughs> something as simple as that. But you know, still to this day, it looks fantastic. Um, you can't see a lot uh, through a lot in in Day of the Dead in terms of the effects. So so yeah, Doctor Tongue number seven on the countdown of the top 10 Romero zombies. Uh, let's see, number six. Here's a classic. Karen Cooper, number six. This was one that I debated with. This is this is right around the, the area where the real debate began in my head of, of who goes where. And I think I'm set, I, I think I had to settle on Karen Cooper at number six. Um, makeup wise, not a lot there. Um, of course, it's Night of the Living Dead. It's early. You know, I'm, I hate to penalize it for that, but I, but I have to. It's, it's the criteria. I have to stick to it. Um, so, yeah, low on the makeup chart. Performance-wise, I do I do put her, I'd give her um, above average um, in terms of a, a kid playing, a uh, portraying a creature that really had never existed before in film. Um we're just menacing, um, menacing. That's how I say it. Just shout out Mark Borchardt. Menacing. Can you be more menacing? Okay, man. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> a menacing look. Um, and, and you know, legacy. Ten out of ten. Um, you know, she's uh, she's the face of on, on a poster. Um, it's an iconic image. Just you know the. Uh, and in terms of the kills, I mean, you know, 
her with the the trowel killing, you know, killing her mom. <laughs> Nobody had seen you know shit like that before in film before that. So just just a memorable, memorable character. A good performance by a young. I wouldn't even say young actress. Just a young girl. She was the daughter of uh, of uh, Harry Cooper and and Helen Cooper in real life. Uh, she was Carl Hardman and Meryl Eastman's daughter, Kyra Schoen, as her name. I don't even know if I said it yet, but but yeah, just a you know great job. I mean, just to think like this little girl <laughs> grows up, and I think she's a teacher now or something. But she's just this iconic image forever to weirdos like me. You know, um, you know, you see her on the back, you know, like bumper stickers on cars. You know, um, you know, just one of the just one of the most iconic uh, zombies um, in, in film general, um, in general. So I put Karen Cooper at number six. Um, start getting into the top five here. So right now to go up, to go down the list of who I got. Number 10, Machete Zombie, Lenny Lee's. At number 9, The Harry Krishna Zombie, played by Mike Christopher. Number 8, Eugene Clark as Big Daddy. Number 7, Dr. Tongue as Dr. Tongue from Day of the Dead. And, of course, uh, Kyra Schoen as Karen Cooper at number 6. So, let's get into it. The top 5 Romero Zombies uh, in the history of the room whatever you want to fucking call this the history of uh, romero zombies we'll just call it that number five roger the roger zombie now makeup of x i'd say a little above average for di- for day of the for dawn of the dead i'm saying um i've actually heard from you know people that here recently who are just seeing the movie for the first time they're uh they actually come in that effect because it's a it's a weird, and I think the effect works with the um, the inner struggle that Roger's character is going through in that movie, where he does not want to come back. He says it to Peter, "I'm going to try not to. I'm going to try not to come back." He, you can see he's trying not to come back, and the makeup expresses it. it his face is wrinkled. And I think they use like tissue or something, let it dry, you know. To really give him that 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 uh, aged look, I guess is what you'd call it. And I think it just it it you know it works well with the with the inner struggle that 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 character's going through. And like we were talking about earlier with the gun zombie, it's a uh, <laughs> you know George was still you know and maybe not even blatantly, but just making the point that there these people still exist inside these uh, these. Uh, these walking zombies and Roger still existed inside that outer shell. Um, and you can see him fight all the way. Like just, I think that's why his, his rise is so slow. He's fighting it. He's fighting it, but he's losing, he's, he's losing the battle. And I wonder if in, 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 in some way, maybe Peter maybe has a little hope in his head and why he doesn't just immediately pull the trigger. Maybe he's thinking maybe he can fight it. Maybe he won't come for me, you know. I don't know. This is the kind of shit that I like to sit and uh, think about. (laughs) So this is what we're doing. Um, But yeah, that's great. Performance-wise, again, top-notch. I I think uh, Scott Reiniger's performance in in Dawn of the Dead is just amazing all the way around. Legacy, uh, I think... It, it, you you can't deny the legacy of Roger's zombie um, in Dawn of the Dead, just for the simple fact that it was the cover of the original Dawn of the Dead on VHS. That poster, it's the um, the Bob Michelucci uh, artwork on that poster where you see him rising, and uh, you know. So yeah, it, it's an iconic uh, iconic image. And uh, in terms of uh, importance to the film, I mean, I think it's it rates very, very important. Um, it's one of the main characters and really one of the one of the first times in Romero's films that uh, you're one of your main characters that you really liked and you were really rooting for came back to life. Um, you know, Night of the Living Dead. I mean, we see Johnny at the end, but. Johnny wasn't a character that you really invested in and, and you were on this 
you know, roller coaster with through this whole story. Um, you know, Harry Cooper rises, but we hated him, so fuck him. Uh, <laughs> even though he was right, Harry Cooper was right. Um, so you know, that was fun. We saw, you know, um, Helen Cooper rise, maybe, maybe Kyra Shones, Karen Cooper. Um, but it, it was just not the same. You weren't. You weren't, it was like, we didn't get to see Ben come back because he gets shot in the head. Barbara just kind of disappears into the crowd. Um, Tom and Judy, they blow up, so we don't really see them. So really, it's the first time in a Romero film that a main character, a hero character, um, comes back to life as a zombie. Um, so I think that's very important. Um, so yeah, that's why I, I got to put Roger in the top five. And that was one I struggled with because it was, you know, he's not in the movie a lot. It's a it's a it's a short stint, and it doesn't do a lot. But I think there's so much more to that scene in general um, than really what I think a lot of people think of and give credit for. Um, so, put Roger at number five. Number four on my list. Now we're getting to the big the big dogs. These are these are uh, these are big time. And at number four on my list. Let me double check. Make sure I got this right. The Airport Zombie, played by Paul Musser. Actually, I think he was going by John Paul Musser at the time. Um, but yes, The Airport Zombie, the iconic, I mean, definitely a 10 out of 10 on, on Legacy. You see his image everywhere. And the funny thing is, he remembers nothing about filming the time period, anything. Uh Apparently, I mean, like I said, him and uh, Mike Christopher were in a band at the time called Fluid, and I think they were probably on, qu you know, quite a few um, substances at the time. Um, so to think that just something that he just kind of showed up for is just kind of a, you know, a lark of like, hey, you know, let's, uh, you know, they need zombies down here. And I think uh, Lenny Lees was working, uh, Lenny and Michael Lees were working with them at the time. Um, and of course, they were working on Dawn of the Dead as well. So they're probably just like, hey, come down. We need, you know, some some bodies to be, uh, to be zombies. And, and what, do you, what do you know? They're two of the most iconic zombies in, in, in all film history. Um, and especially the airport zombie. Um, iconic makeup. Um, I mean, his image is everywhere. It's on the poster, the main U.S. poster. I mean, it, it's... It's the most iconic zombie, um, you know. I would say probably maybe the most iconic zombie of all time. If Dawn of the Dead is is the zombie movie, I mean, how can you argue that he wouldn't be, you know, his face is on the poster of almost every poster you see. Um, definitely has a lot of action figures, you know, a lot of figures, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff with his face on it. All right. Pretty much anything that with Dawn of the Dead has his face on it in some form or fashion. Uh, Performance-wise, I mean, you know, probably a one, maybe at the most. <laughs> maybe a zero. I don't even, you know, there's not much of a performance there. He just kind of walks into the shot, fucking gets shot, and falls on the table, and that's that's, that's it. So, not a lot there performance-wise. Um, the effect, though, makeup effects. Um, I'd probably give it like an eight. It would be a 10, just, you know, I, that's that was a great makeup uh, that Tom did at the time um, for 1978. But, uh, and it's weird because there's, there's no headshot, there's no that, and it's kind of a shoot, zombie falls, you just see, you know, there's no actual death to it. So I have to take off a couple of points for that. Um, but in terms of importance to the film, also, you know, maybe not too important to the overall story of Dawn of the Dead or the story of... Um, uh, of the dead films in general. Um, but I, I, it makes up for it with the makeup and just his overall legacy. Like I said, he's probably the most um, most recognizable zombie in, in Romero history, may I say. And I still got three names to go here. And I think there's a debate to be had of whether any three of them are a more iconic zombie image. Um than, than the airport zombie here. And, and, you know, talking about conventions, so of course he's been doing conventions for years and years and years. Um, uh, you know, definitely, definitely a popular, 
guy. I wish he would do more. I think he would do more if he could. I don't know how his health is. Last time I met him, he, he was, um, this is actually a pretty, pretty cool story. Last time I met him, it was uh, Living Dead Weekend last year. Um, and he was just sitting there and he was just kind of like, you know, just didn't, wasn't feeling, feeling the vibe. Not, not that he was being rude or definitely not. He, I, I, I want to say that there was, he was maybe in, in some, some poor health at the time. I think yeah, there's been some stories over the past few years of uh, him having some health problems. So I think he was just there, you know, and I, you know, had a few things for him to sign and, uh, you know, he signs them and, you know, the guy, I guess his handler, or, you know, somebody that, that he, uh, he was with at the time, uh, super nice, super talkative, you know, I guess he was trying to, cause you know, he, uh, Paul Musser, um, you know, just, just didn't have, didn't have the energy. And I'm sure he's been just signing stuff. And this was probably on like a Sunday, I believe. So he'd been signing stuff all weekend. So I had, a, I think three things for him to sign. Um, the, uh, Bob Michelucci poster book, um, I had him sign. And then his action figure, the Japanese, um, cult classics, zombie Dawn of the Dead figure. I got it back there, but had him sign that. And then the third thing I had him sign is I do have uh, a 45 of uh, a, f a fluid single, um, which, of course, has an A side and a B side. But I had that as well. And as soon as I laid that down on the table for him to sign, he just perks up. He's just like, oh, wow. Where did you find this? You know, just <laughs> he was blown away that, that he probably hadn't seen that in in who knows how many years and he's looking at it and he's just, then he starts telling stories about, Oh, I was the sax player in this band. And, and it was just, it just brought him to life. He, he was so, uh, so happy to see that. And of course he signed it and then put in parentheses, you know, sax man, you know, um, it, it was really cool. I was, <laughs> I was really happy cause I was going to, you know, I was bringing it to be like, ah, oh, more than anything, just to show him. Cause I figure he probably had, cause you know, I don't know how many of those exist in the world, and he probably hadn't seen one in years. But just the the circumstances and the situation around it, um, just just to see how you know, he's just you know maybe not feeling the best in the world. But this just one little thing just kind of perked him up and just kind of you know brought back a bunch of memories and just so uh, that's a that's a good memory, good memory that I that i got from uh living dead weekend last year and of course that's coming up this year in june folks if you don't have tickets if you don't plan on going please i beg you to if you haven't been to the mall uh, monroeville mall you got to and there's no better time to go than because i mean you're literally going to be there with tons of other people that you know look at the mall the way you do <laughs> you know if you're if you're a huge fan of dawn of the dead and you haven't been to the mall go it, it's it's uh so anyway, it's a lot has changed, of course. I mean, it's been 45 years. Um, but, uh, but you know, like, like a friend of mine said, the bones are still there. You can, it's, if you know the movie, you'll know them all. Uh, and that's all I can say. Um, but anyway, let, let's keep it moving here. Cemetery, Cemetery Zombie at number three. Uh, blew it there. I should have had a, a bigger build up. But uh, yes, number three. I got the cemetery zombie from uh, Night of the Living Dead. Um, of course, Bill Heinzman, Legacy. There's, there's no argument. He's the very first, you know, flesh-eating zombie in movie history. Um, all the movies that came after it, you know, f you know, going from Living Dead at Manchester Morgue, Children Shouldn't Play with Dead Things, Dawn of the Dead, all the way up through, you know, Day of the Dead, Return of the Living Dead. Um, Gosh, I mean, the thousands of zombie movies made after the fact. He was the first one. Bill Heinzman, Cemetery Zombie, the first iconic zombie that anyone had ever seen. Um, so, Legacy, I mean, if I could give that one an 11, I would. Uh, Performance-wise, I'd say above average. Um, and, of course, being the first zombie is kind of hard because nobody really knows what a zombie is. How, are they, how is a zombie supposed to act? What do they want? You know, and, and from you know, interviews and stuff like that. Uh, Bill Hines pretty much just said, George, just like, well, you have to be slow moving, but you also have to be fast enough to keep up with a running girl. So figure it out. <laughs> so, and I think he pulls it off. I mean, he's like, he's still, 
yeah, he's a little faster than most zombies, but he's also fresh. I mean, this is right at the beginning. So I've always had that um, thought of, in terms of fast zombies versus slow zombies. If I could buy if they were fast when they reanimated. Um, for whatever reason, I, you, you know, if there's a jolt of energy that brings them back or if their body's rigor mortis hasn't set in yet or however you want to spin it. I, I, I would believe fast zombies if they were fast for maybe the first couple of days. And then as time goes on and as, you know, rigor mortis sets in and the body starts deteriorating and falling apart, of course, you'll probably move a little slower. Um, so that's the way I can kind of spin that in my head for why the cemetery zombie is a little faster than pretty much any other zombie in any Romero movie ever. Um, and of course, because that was kind of the direction that George gave him. <laughs> so we'll, we'll throw that in there, too. But um, so, yeah, makeup. Um, <clears throat> no big death in the movie. He does that, that zombie does not die in the movie at any point. Although you do see him at the end of the movie on the uh, the uh, the bonfire, the pile that they throw Ben's body on, and uh, in one of the photos you see the he's got the bullet hole in the head. So a couple of points there on that. Um, and in terms of just makeup, just very simple. You know, nothing major. He's got a tear on his shoulder. Um, but really, yeah, outside of that. Um, not much in terms of the makeup department <clears throat> importance to the film. I mean, that's, that's an easy 10. It's the first zombie that we've ever seen. And he's kind of the constant thing that's torturing Barbara <laughs> throughout the whole movie. Um, she, he won't go away. He wants her. I mean, and that's the thing that snaps her out of her, um, not coma, but, uh, that's what I'm looking for. <clears throat> her trance, whatever you want to call it. Um, her comatose state. We'll call it that. That sounds cool. Um, to where she gets up to fight back at that, you know. So his port his importance to the Night of the Living Dead is is a ten out of ten. Um <clears throat> he's I mean, even to the point where they gave him a backstory and extra scenes and all kinds of shit in that uh that Night of the Living Dead uh, <laughs> fuck, what was it called? Uh I think it was the 30th anniversary version that John Russo and Russ Dreiner did, which <clears throat> was one of those things that when it came out, I was at right, that right age where I was just discovering these films for the first time and seeing that was kind of, kind of cool because I, I do kind of enjoy some of the music in that. Um, it, there are parts of it that the music kind of works. Um, but for the most part, looking back on it, it's it's not good. It's really, really bad. But at the time, I thought it was, hey, this is really cool. They're giving the you know cemetery zombie a backstory, and he was a child molester or something. I don't know, but it was kind of stupid. But, um, but yeah, yeah. So I mean, importance, you know, ten out of ten. Um, and so yeah, I mean, there, there's of course action figures and and just the, the iconic image of the, the cemetery zombie itself is is unmistakable and undeniable um so yeah i gotta put him at number three what do you think folks do you disagree um if you do let me know hit the unlike button do that if you disagree with this list i dare you hit the unlike button because i want to know i want to know what do you think of my list um so yeah cemetery zombie number three now we're down to the top two zombies in romero film history and this was a toss-up this one was close. Um, this one is really close, to be honest with you guys. But at the end of the day, at number two, I have to go with Flyboy, the Flyboy zombie. Elevator doors open. Iconic. <laughs> Just an iconic shot, iconic scene. Makeup, you know, it's got to be up there. Eight. Maybe a nine. Just great. Just the bites. You just see the open gash on the neck. and Great, man. You even see there's like, um, if you look close enough in, in the shot, there's like, it's like he's got broken teeth um, at certain times. Or I guess, you know, he's, I don't know. They just There's a lot put into that zombie. And the performance, a 10 out of 10. I mean, to me, that zombie walk is the best zombie walk ever. Not even close. Nobody even comes close to that zombie walk. The foot, you know, got the gun dangling from the finger. Um, yeah, I mean, performance-wise, it's a 10 out of 10. 
in terms of just the zombie walk the body contortion just the oh it's so good david m Geese is so good um in that as as a zombie i i can't say enough um legacy wise i mean legacy speaks for itself there's a thousand action figures out there of the flyboy zombie um his image is everywhere i mean there's you know it's it's one of the easiest um cosplays for dawn of the dead is the flyboys i mean there's a um there's a guy who uh from the uk who cosplays um as a as flyboy at living dead weekend and he he's spot on he looks just like david Ingby, Ingby. it's fucking weird <laughs> it's it, it, he also does johnny from night of living dead too i think at times and even that he looks pretty fucking spot on um it, it's crazy but um but yeah yeah so i mean uh, uh, legacy got to be a 10 out of 10 on that um like we already talked about the makeup performance is great the importance to the film i think that's also super high numbers um it's got to be an eight or a nine um just for the simple fact that i mean he's the one that leads the zombies up to um peter and uh and fran and forces them to leave i've always wondered like if 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 uh if flyboy hadn't remembered where they were would peter and fran stay at the mall after the fact because i mean yeah the mall has been kind of fucked but their living area i mean i'm sure they had food stocked up there there's you know um you know protection um i think they would have been fine if they would just wanted to have hung out but um actually you know think about it, i think fran is actually like getting ready to leave before flyboy so i think they were just planning on leaving anyway but either way and another interesting thing about um the flyboy we're getting into the minutiae here and that's what i'm here for and hopefully you are too um but another thing about the flyboy zombie that i always thought was interesting um an interesting debate to have is he going to eat them like is is in his mind, he knows, okay, they're up there. I got to get, I got to get there. I got to get up there. Is he going because he knows that's where the food is at? Or is he going just because in his memory, I got to, I got to get back. I got to get back to, uh, to my pregnant girlfriend and, and my buddy Peter. And we got to get out of here. Cause I mean, he, once he breaks through the wall and he gets up the stairs, you know, once he, once he enters the room, he shuts the door behind him. <laughs> subtle thing maybe it's just you know this is his zombie reflex or whatever you want to call it but that, uh, that does plant the idea in your head that okay guys i'm here i'm sh shutting the door we, we gotta go <laughs> like maybe he does he's not fully aware of the fact that he is a zombie yet like he's like part zombie part flyboy still like okay guys let's get out interesting you know, mental masturbation there, I guess you can call it. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, just, um, one of the most iconic zombies in Romero history. I, you know, I, I could say that, but, and I probably have said it about every single person on this list, but, uh, you, you really can't argue a fly boy at number two. And I think that makes it fairly obvious, um, who my number one zombie of all time in the Romero universe is. But before we get to him, let's go through the top 10 here. Machete zombie at number 10, Harry Krishna Zombie at number nine, Big Daddy at number eight, Dr. Tongue at number seven, Karen Cooper at number six, Roger at number five, Airport Zombie at number four, Cemetery Zombie at number three, and Flyboy is number two of all time. So now, my number one uh, all time greatest zombie um, in the Romero universe is 100% without question. And it was, like I said, it was a toss-up between him and Flyboy, but I think when you just break it down, um, piece by piece, Bub, Day of the Dead, and I don't know what else I have to say other than that. In terms of performance, not only is it the best, um, Performance-wise, when when comparing Bub and Flyboy, um, there were there's two types of performances. Flyboy was a physical performance. Bub is a an emotional and uh, mental performance. Um, but physical on on the uh, uh, on the same 
you know, side of the coin there. Uh, but just not in terms of the zombie walk and, and that. But just his performance as you, you you sympathize with him, you care for him. It's almost like he's he, he played like, you know, he says he played it like a baby. And that's how you look at him. You look at him as like he's Dr. Logan's little baby. He's taking care of him. He loves, you know, Dr. Logan is like his mommy, you know, and, 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 and God, Howard Sherman, Sherman Howard or Merman Showered or whatever you want to call him now. Um, such a great performance. Uh, and to me, one of the, one of the best just performances period in any Romero film. Um, and even, uh, I think Roger Avery in the day of the dead, um, commentary uh that uh, he did for anchor bay and of course roger avery um worked with quentin tarantino on pulp fiction and and was the director of killing zoe um you know he even says in his opinion that um uh, howard sherman's performances above in day of the dead was the best performance of any film in 1985 uh, and i think he even quotes a saying like i uh i don't care if if a raging bull came out the same year, <laughs> he would still put Howard Sherman as the best performance. And, and I agree. I mean, that was the first, that was the thing that stood out to me the first time I saw day. And honestly, and this is something we'll get into at a different time, but first time I saw day of the dead, I wasn't the biggest fan. I don't think a lot of people felt the same way. Um, but the one thing that stood out was Bub's performance or Howard Sherman's performance as Bub. Um, so yeah, performance. I mean, that's, as high as it, as you can get, ten out of ten, eleven out of ten. It's it's one of the best performances of any Romero film in any Romero film period. Um, I'd put him right up there with John Amblis and, and Martin. To be honest with you, um, makeup effects, great, great makeup. Um, and I mean, you even down to the hands. I mean, the best thing about that makeup to me that that Savini was able to accomplish was that he was able to make the makeup. Um, uh, reactive to uh, and that's the thing that makes it work so well is Howard Sherman's facial features and his expressions the makeup you know uh, helps portray that a lot of makeup's just very stiff and you're not you're not going to see very much in terms of um, facial reactions and expressions but I mean this one was you know 100% on spot on the point um you know no death scenes, so no, you know, makeup effect there. But definitely, I'd give it like an eight, nine, um, just for the uh, the ability for him to emote in that makeup. I, th- I think that that's what makes a great makeup, um, especially for a zombie. Um, uh, what the fuck? What are the other categories? Legacy. You know, he's the probably the most popular. Uh, it's either him or the airport zombie is the most popular zombie um, of all time, and that's that's the toss up. But uh, I think he edges out maybe a little bit in the other categories, which puts him a little higher. But like I said, these these last three or four, you can really put him in any order. Um, but I think Bub, just in terms of the performance itself, his importance to the film, I mean, I think he may be the most important in, in any of the Romero films in terms of just the story that's being told. Because it's the first zombie that really we can start to see is is he's smart. He's not aggressive. I mean, he's... he's He's almost human again. In a weird way, he's almost human again. I mean, and the importance to just Day of the Dead and just the overall, I mean, it's a 10 out of 10 in terms of importance. Um, so, I mean, he pretty much, it's a perfect score all the way across the board for me, for Bub. Um, and yeah, and like I said, in terms of legacy, he's got action figures. I have a t-shirt with just his face on it. Um you know, it's uh, it's hard to argue that Bub isn't the number one zombie in the uh, Romero universe. So, so that's it. That's the uh, that's the top ten of the Romero zombies. And of course, Bub's coming in a very close second uh, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the number one zombie. Um, which I feel compelled to say here on Easter, the day that he rose from the dead. Um, and forgave us for our sins. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm going at now. But yeah, let me know what you think down there in the comments. Give me a like or give me a dislike if you think this list sucks. Um, I will listen to both sides. I'm uh, not left. I'm not right. I'm right in the middle. Okay. Um, 
so yeah, that'll do it for me. I hope you guys had a uh, had a great Easter weekend, and um, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And like I said, if you have any disagreements or hell, just give me your top ten down in the bottom. Uh, maybe I miss maybe I missed one that you're just like, well, what is this fucking he talking about? Why didn't he include, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, sweater zombie or nurse zombie or uh, oh geez, why didn't he include the uh, John Russo drunk zombie, which is what I call him. Um, I've got a text from somebody. Anyway, uh, appreciate you guys checking this out. You guys have a great rest of the night. And, of course, stay tuned and stay scared.